questions. Hello and welcome to another edition, I know you've been waiting for it, of Spill the Tea right here in beautiful Orange County, Florida. Um, today, your host, Keisha Savory and... Nicole Garelli. Hi, everyone. Yes, we have some special guests with us to kick things off for the 21-22 school year. That's right. Now, notice no mask on our face still, so that's a good thing. In our schools, just people, before you go crazy, yes, in our schools, we still have to wear masks, but where we are, we're chilling. We don't need the mask, and we're going to keep things going with our special guest today. We're going to start things off with um, an extra special person. He is the founder of I'm First, and we are so excited that he can join us. Give it up for my boy, Matt Rubinoff. Matt. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, so uh, I am the founder of the National I'm First campaign uh, and chief strategy officer for a national nonprofit called Strive for College. Um, I'm First actually merged with Strive uh, about five years ago. Um, I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area. I went to college in Atlanta, Georgia, Emory University. And I studied sociology there. I did a fellowship in community building and social change and really wanted to get into the nonprofit sector with my career. Um, I fell into this opportunity to build uh, an organization that focused on helping students from low-income backgrounds who would be first in their family to go to college, connect with and discover college opportunities. Um, I grew this nonprofit over a decade. Um, we created uh, I'm First as a, as a campaign to really celebrate and support uh, first-gen students specifically. Um, and then we were acquired actually um, by a peer organization uh, called Strive for College. So for the last five years, um, Strive or I'm First has been part of or under the, the, the Strive for College umbrella. I'm sure we'll have a chance to, to talk a little bit more about our, our different um, programs and services for, for students and, uh, and supporters. Um, but uh, I think the only other thing I was gonna mention is that I currently reside in Orange County, California, um, uh, but we have that connection. Um, so thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. You represent the West Side. It's all good. I had to do that. I had to throw up the W for you. But I also want to thank you as a first gen student myself. I just wish you guys were around when I was when I was in school. Uh, shoot, I wish the internet was around when I was in school too. So, <laughs> but since we are talking with Matt with this fantastic program for first gens, we also have a former first gen himself representing Colonial High School. Yes, an alumni and also an alumni of the Air Force Academy. Let's give it up for Angel Zalea. Did I say it right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us yeah, a little hello. bit about yourself, Angel. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, my name is Angel Zalea. Uh, born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Mom's from Puerto Rico, dad's from Honduras, and I was born and raised there. Uh, a single mom growing up, low income family. Went to Ventura Elementary, then to Liberty Middle School, and went to Colonial High School. Graduated in 2016. Applied for, I, rem I don't even remember at this point, but I remember I applied to like 12, 15 schools when I was back, <laughs> back in high school. Wow. Very busy, very busy. Uh, was part of NHS, president, and I did a ton of sports. Uh, went to the Air Force Academy. Uh, I studied business management with a minor in Spanish. I was able to do a semester exchange to Spain. I did an internship to my, to uh, DC and Microsoft. A lot of a lot of doors opened up for me for applying for like you know, the Air Force Academy, and now I am a, residing in Sacramento, California, just north of <laughs> uh, Los Angeles, <laughs> where the other Orange County is. And I'm a pilot now. <laughs> I'm a pilot now in the Air Force over here. That's awesome. We've got Orange County represented on both sides. I love it. I love it. But let's keep it going. Nicole, you can take it away now. All right, so our focus today is first generation and here in Orange County, Florida, as, a, as well as Orange County, um, California, I'm sure we have a ton of first generation students. 
So I was hoping that Matt could kind of fill us in a little bit on kind of the definition of first gen and what that kind of means. Yeah, it's a great question, Nicole. You know, there's still no real kind of universally accepted uh, definition of first generation college student, but I think at this point, um, most the most commonly adopted uh, definition um, that most colleges and universities use, the federal government uses for um, federal TRIO programs like Upward Bound, uh, which many of you might have heard of or even participate in, um, uses the definition of neither parent having received a four-year college degree. Um, so if you're a student whose parents um, uh, don't have a college degree or even have gone to some college or, or finished a, a, an associate's degree or a technical certificate, um, you still, by most definitions, are a first generation college student. Um, and, you know, I think what, uh, what we think is so, you know, special about being the first uh, is that it's something to be celebrated. Um, it, it, it connotates, you know, breaking barriers, overcoming obstacles, um, uh, and, and setting a new trajectory for um, your, your family uh, um, by, by making it to college and, 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 and completing college. And so um, we recognize that that's special and are looking to celebrate and support um, students like you, as are many colleges and universities who have um, you know, a growing number of, of programs and, and opportunities and resources for students like you on their campus, um, whether it's a dedicated first-generation scholarship or um, a, a first-gen student organization that meets regularly um, to build community to find support. Um, so being first-gen is something to be proud of and to acknowledge and um, and I think it's becoming more commonplace for students um, from these types of backgrounds to, to understand and, and to self-identify. Great. I know it's, it's so important these days for us to understand, you know, the different types of backgrounds that our students come from and the different struggles they have from being the first one in their family to attend college. Um, so, Angel, what do you think are some of the struggles that you might have had because you were a first generation going through the application process in high school? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, well, the biggest thing is because I'm first generation, I don't have the same resources as, you know, like my parents or my, you know, my mother specifically uh, didn't have the opportunity to go to college. So just that one less resource that I could go to for any kind of information or, or uh, anything like that. Um, I really did have to go outside and seek uh, help from other resources, uh, specifically my guidance counselor. From, that was the first, my go-to was my guidance counselor every single time. And if she didn't know, she would refer me to someone else. Um, but during the application process, I think my biggest heart, my biggest difficulty was trying to convey my life story on a piece of paper, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is literally what, you know, colleges look at to decide. I mean, that's one of the biggest factors is whether or not, you know, what is this person, why, how is this person different from any other person that's applying, you know? And it, it's hard. The biggest, I think my biggest challenge was just really, you know, putting my life story on a piece of paper and saying, hey, here's who I am. Um, but for that, I would say, you know, go to your kindness counselor, have them, you know, him or her review it, go to any English professors or teachers, have them review it, read yourself, you know, read it yourself, uh, get peer reviews. And my biggest thing when I was applying, I had applied to a ton of colleges, like I said, and, you know, Granted, I didn't know I was going to get into any of them or some of them or whatever, but the biggest thing is I had a ton of practice applying, 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 revising, 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 and that really did improve my, you know, my essays by the end of it. Right. So, Angel, what made you go seek out your school counselor? Was that just something in you that you went or a lot uh, of yeah, students uh, are a little shy on that end? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I was in my guidance counselor's office. Any time that I had free time, I was so busy my senior year with sports or school or studying or whatnot that if I had any downtime, I would go to my guidance counselor. I wasn't just asking questions. I would just be hanging out, you know, picking her brain, seeing what I could do better. Um, and I had a lot of my friends that were doing the same thing. So, you know, another thing is just being in a group of people that are doing the same thing as you, right? So if other people are also applying for a ton of colleges or just, you know, one or two colleges, you know, working with them, you guys come across the same struggles you guys can just go to the guidance counselor and, 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 you know, rough out those, those edges. Right. 
So are there any other resources then besides the school counselor that you sought out or that you wish you would have sought out? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I think personally, uh, if, I, if I didn't find out through my guidance counselor, it was probably just through Google, you know, looking up resources for first gen or <laughs> how to get into college. Like literally now in, our, in today's day, day and age, we have the internet at our hands. You can look up almost anything there with any resources that are there. And that's how I came across like Westbridge, for example, um, different scholarship opportunities that have workshops at different colleges that kind of, you know, help students, uh, you know, like I said, workshops, essays, you know, et cetera, like that. So, I mean, that's what I did. Yeah. And then Matt, are you aware then of any other resources then for the high school students, maybe on their end with the application process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for asking. Uh, so part of the I'm First campaign is a college guidebook that we publish. Um, there you go. The I'm oh, First campaign. Is. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> have that product out, Matt. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, maybe Nicole and Keisha, Keisha can help uh, your schools uh, get your hands on it. But um, we distribute this book across the country to uh, schools and college access organizations that work with students. It's the only um, college guidebook designed uniquely for first generation college bound students. Um, what's different about it compared to maybe other, you know, more popular college guidebooks is, is that there's a college planning curriculum uh, content in the book, articles, activities, um, worksheets, quizzes that are designed to, uh, you know, speak uniquely to the needs and interests of uh, of first-gen students. Um, and then there's a collection of college profiles who partner with our organization, colleges, universities that partner with our organization because they care about first-gen students and they want to tell more students about the unique programs and, and opportunities uh, that they offer for, for, for these students. And so the college profile in the book um, looks a little bit different than you might find uh, in other college guidebooks. Um, it gets beyond the general admissions information and facts and figures um, and brings to the surface kind of what's in it for me as a first-gen student, um, uh, what kinds of campus programs and student support services and financial aid uh, opportunities exist um, to help a student like me be successful at that college. Um, so that's the, the I'm First Guide to College um, resource. We have a companion website at imfirst.org, uh, which is a first-gen stories campaign and a student blog. Um, so uh, it's a great place to find um, kind of uh, inspiration and encouragement um, from students who have come before you, um, not just currently enrolled first-gen students, but alumni. I hope to see Nicole and Angel and Kaisha um, contribute their own first gen uh, story to the to the I'm First campaign. Um, and many of you guys can can do the same and, and at least log on to to watch these videos and follow the student blogs. Um, it's a great resource at, at I'mfirst.org. Uh, and then the last thing I'll, I'll mention, as I mentioned um, earlier, I'm first became part of Strive for College a few years ago. And Strive for College operates a national uh, virtual mentoring program. Uh, so for free, um, students can connect to a dedicated uh, mentor and work with them uh, on this uh, online platform called Ustrive. Um, Ustrive.com is the website. Uh, we have volunteer mentors um, who uh, are mostly adult professionals. Um, uh, they connect with us through their companies. They work for some pretty prestigious companies uh, like uh, Deloitte Consulting, American Express, um, Amgen in, in kind of the, the biotech pharmaceutical space. Um, so they, they have gone to a range of different colleges themselves and work in a lot of different career fields, but they, they want to help students and, and they, they volunteer with us to do that. Um, some of our mentors come to us through our, our partnerships with colleges and universities as well. Um, but on Ustrive, you know, it, it's, a, it's another you know, point of connection to, to supplement the help that you're um, already receiving from your, your school counselors. Um, you can research colleges and universities on Ustrive. We have a robust college search tool. Um, you can collaborate on documents with your mentor, um, your college essays, personal statements, resumes, cover letters, et cetera. 
Um, you can work through uh, college planning guides. We have uh, a lot of um, content and, and, and curriculum and lessons uh, on the platform. Um, and you can communicate with your mentor through the app. Um, uh, there's text messaging, there's phone calls that are kind of bridged through Ustrive, so you're not sharing personal identifiable information. Um, and you can video chat with your mentor as well, all in a, a secure and, and safe environment. Um, so I encourage you to check out Ustrive as well. That is awesome. And so much info just right in front of them. I mean, I know that Angel, uh, be we're probably on the same page. You know, when your parents, uh, my parents are from Trinidad and they had no idea what the American, you know, school system was like. So they're like, man, how can I help them? And you came up with some, you have some great um, resources, Matt, but as a first generation student, when you don't know what direction you go into and your family, they support you, but they don't really know what direction leads you into, you're left to making some decisions obviously on your own. So Angel, when you were thinking about <clears throat> what school you should choose for yourself, what, you know, what were some of the things you thought about that made you go, okay, this is where I want to go. This is the, you know, was there anything yeah. important to you being a first gen student? Yeah, there was a lot of things I thought about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, some of those things, uh, simple as, you know, location. I mean, it all depends on who, you know, it, all, it really just depends on, you know, the specific person. But for me, I looked at location, how far I wanted to be from home, you know, uh, reputation of the school, you know, how good was the school, how far away was it? Uh, you know, uh, all that, uh, you know, all that. Uh, but personally, for my own goals, I really wanted to grow, mature, and, you know, adventure on my own. And that's where I decided to try to try to seek out, you know, out-of-state schools, for example, um, prestigious schools. I really wanted to grow. I didn't want to, and nothing wrong with that, but I just didn't want to go and uh, continue on in the same in Orlando, for example. Um, so I did apply for a lot of out-of-state schools. But the con to that, right, I mean, my, during my experience at college, I didn't have the same resources that someone that was that went to Valencia or UCF, you know, they had, you know, they could just go home or they can go to their friends that are just down the street, you know, they could see their friends, all that, you know, like, I felt a lot more alone during my process, you know, going to college than someone that had stayed back. But that really did force me to have to grow and mature like that, you know, like, so yeah. um, that was my personal, that was, that's what I wanted. And I knew I had wanted that. And those are the same, those are the, some of the things that I had thought about. Uh, but like I said, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons to both sides, but the uh, biggest things were just location, reputation, and obviously, you know, the cost, how much, you know, school and, you know, being realistic with the amount of loans, grants, and scholarships that one has, so. So how did you yeah. deal then with being lonely and being by yourself, and what kind of things did you do at the college then to kind of help out with all that? Well, the first thing I did was they have, you know, every single college has like their, you know, their rush, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like what clubs and sports they have there. And the first thing I did was grab some people that I had met at lunch, for example, and, you know, uh, just walked around, see what clubs or all the clubs are just saying, hey, we want you, we want you, we want you. Um, so I had joined Hispanic Heritage Club, you know, because as a Hispanic in Orlando, going to university that's uh, doesn't have a lot of Hispanics, it, that alone kind of, you know, uh, make me feel different or you know alone or not um, so I joined that club I had joined a volleyball uh, team you know so we met every single day and so just like that those two things alone I was already part of you know uh, two teams and that made me that helped me a lot more with you know feeling lonely and whatnot so so, yeah. so uh, I think that is such a great idea joining clubs a lot of students are, really don't think about going, you know, going to college and thinking, hey, I could join a club, I, you know, intramural sports, this would be great. And I know that, you know, you chose the Air Force Academy. So what was it about the Air Force Academy that made you go, let me go there? Uh, you know, I had visited one time on a trip and it was beautiful and I was like, I'll apply here. <laughs> no, but I had, I had family that was in the military and as officers and you know, I had thought about maybe joining as an officer and the best way to do it is just going through a military academy. Um, I didn't know I was going to go in. The, the process a lot is a lot more lengthy and, and, and rigorous than, you know, normal university, um, which made applying for normal universities a lot easier. You know, I had to get a congressional nomination and that itself was a, was a process. 
Uh, but, you know, ultimately I did decide, you know, I wanted to go to this university because one, uh, you know, college was free for me, you know, my, my entire tuition, four years paid for, and not only that, but I got a paycheck, um, and then it guaranteed a, uh, you know, a job after graduation. So and I couldn't say no, I couldn't say no to that. <laughs> and you can do sports and, and clubs there too. That's awesome. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I traveled. Yeah, it was good. Wow. And then Matt, I know on the I'm First website, there's a list of colleges they kind of have paired with I'm First for first generation students. So what does a college have to have in order to be worthy enough of <laughs> being on the I'm good for first generation yeah. students page? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, you know, we are still, you know, a well-kept secret in a lot of ways and trying to, you know, in invite and encourage more institutions to pay attention to what we're doing and, and align with our programs. So, um, you know, we're not saying, you know, we're not saying that these are the best or the only um, schools for first-gen students. Um, it's not a ranking or a rating. Um, there is some vetting that goes into it, um, but, and, and colleges do apply to be part of our program. Um, uh, but it, in that sense, it, it's kind of a representative sample uh, of institutions um, that have demonstrated that, that they care about first-gen students and want to be a part of a program like ours to tell um, prospective students uh, you know, across the country to reach a wider audience um, you know, with, uh, uh, with their reach and, 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 and with information about, about their institution. Um, you know, generally speaking, uh, you know, we are catering to institutions that, um, you know, are demonstrating high uh, or at least above average um, uh, retention and graduation rates um, so that they, you know, are, are showing that, that they're able to get students, especially uh, first-gen students, um, to the finish line. Um, which is important because it's, you know, it's one thing to get there, um, but really the goal is to, to, to finish with that, with that degree. Um, and then we're also looking for, you know, the, the semblance of, uh, of campus programs and support services. What are they actually doing um, to, to serve uh, students? Um, you know, do they have a first-gen student organization? Do they have a fly-in or visit program for prospective students who are first-gen um, or, or otherwise, you know, low income uh, from a, from an underrepresented minority background. Um, do they have a do they have a bridge program or a first year experience to help students um, transition and, and acclimate to college? So um, it's important to us that the colleges that we work with and accept into our program and feature in our book and on our website um, have demonstrated that they are paying special attention to. Um, first-gen students and, and catering to them through um, dedicated uh, um, programs and, and support services. And, and so um, maybe I'm jumping ahead and you're going to kind of ask this question in, in a similar, different way. But, you know, I think my advice for students um, who are in high school now and starting to, to research college options and, and, and thinking about, you know, where you're going to apply and, and ultimately where you choose to to go is to, um, is to take a more what's in it for me approach um, to your college search. Uh, we tend to coach students to think about colleges in terms of location and size and selectivity and cost and, and academic areas of interest and sports. Um, you know, all of those things are important in terms of guiding your college search, um, but for first gen students especially, um, that's really just the, the tip of the iceberg. And we want to push students earlier in the process um, to be thinking more critically about, okay, if I'm going to apply to this college or I'm going to choose to go to this college, I know ahead of time that, uh, that, that they have certain programs and, and opportunities to help a student like me be successful. Um, so, you know, some questions uh, to be asking and, and things to be researching. Um, you know, does this college offer a special fly-in or visit program to help, you know, me experience life on campus um, before uh, enrolling? Do they have dedicated scholarships for first-gen students or, or diverse student populations? Um, is there a, a bridge program or a, a first-year experience program to help 
me be successful um, when, when I get there? Is there mentoring, academic advising, what do tutoring and, and services and writing center services look like? Is there a first-gen student organization? These are things that you know, we help bring to the surface through how we profile colleges and universities in our book and on our website. But even when you're just visiting a college's website or even visiting a campus uh, in real life, um, these are things to be paying attention to and um, considering earlier in the process um, to, to guide where you choose to apply and ultimately where you choose to enroll. So you're not you know, just showing up on campus uh, and, and only, only then kind of looking around and figuring out um, how am I going to find my community? How am I going to be supported and successful here, both, both in and out of the classroom? Matt, do you find that with the first gen students, that's probably one of the biggest things is, you know, where do I fit in, you know, or having just that hesitation of leaving the nest? Yeah, I mean you're 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 breaking new ground for your for your family and and being the first uh, to go to college, and so that's inherently um, uncomfortable. Even if you're going to a school that's close to home and and maybe has a, a high first gen population, um, you know there's still that unknown. And even you know any student, you know I I had my own kind of struggles uh, the first year of college. Um, it, you know college in any any way shape or form is um, is is different and challenging. And, and so, you know, uh, being able to, to kind of go into it, understanding what your institution offers and, and different um, programs or clubs or student groups to connect with, um, to find that community and find that support uh, is, is so vital. Go ahead, Nicole. I know you got yeah. something. I know. I I'm it. just I, I know it's it. all just coming in my head. I love it <laughs> I because as a first generation too, like I didn't have any of that. And all I knew was if you got good grades, you went to University of Illinois. That's where I'm from. That's kind of, if you weren't strong enough for like Northwestern, then you got good grades and you liked big schools, which you didn't even know. You just went to University of Illinois. So I was wondering, Angel, either you and or your friends that you've seen kind of like that first year of college. Did you see some of those resources and stuff that I was talking about that made some transitions more easier than others or things that high schoolers now should be looking for in college that are first generation? I mean, I, that's not something I was even considering was, you know, what would, what would life be once I'm there? What are the resources that would be available for me? And he brings up a great point. Like, I wish I had, you know, looked into that. Luckily, my school had, you know, really good resources, you know, and I can't say the same about any other university, but you know, I wish I was thinking about those things in high school instead of, you know, just showing up that day. And, you know, once I was struggling in, in some kind of uh, subject, luckily we had this program it's called EI Extra Instruction, where they would have office hours in, late into the evening. And there would be a professor there either, you know, revising essays with you or, you know, working on your physics homework or whatever you needed to do, you know, um, and that, that, were, that were there easily accessible to you. Um, but that's not something I was even considering. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Now, this question is for both of you guys. I'm going to start with Matt first. You know, we're, we're focusing on, of course, we're talking about first generation students, but what about the parents? You know, I know there's definitely a hesitation sometimes for the kids, some somewhat of guilt when they when they're leaving the nest, like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving them behind. But, you know, then you have mama, papa back there going, Oh my God, my kid's going to leave. What, you know, what are some of the things that you've seen or dealt with when it comes to the parents? We'll, we'll start with Matt first. Yeah, I think you bring up a, a great point. Um, and our, our book does have a section for, for parents and mentors um, that is uh, also translated into Spanish um, for non-English speaking cool. um, parents. Um, because we think it's, yeah, it's so important for parents to be uh, a, a positive and engaged, um, you know, part of the conversation and part of the process with first gen students. Um, you know, there is, I think, this this common understanding of the value of college, um, but uh, and 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 kind of you know vague general support for their children to 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 pursue that, um, but because of the unknown, um, you know, we we do find often that. That, that parents of would-be first-gen students sometimes are, are kind of 
detractors or negative influences on their students, you know, um, pursuit of college. They're they're reluctant to for their for their children to to leave home. Um, sometimes it's important that they have you know jobs and income that is 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 supporting the family. And and so um, yeah, I mean we we try to um, you know, dispel some of the common myths, um, uh, about college and, uh, and, and give, um, uh, you know, students and parents some, some kind of conversation starters, um, to help them kind of be part of the process, even if they're not going to be driving it, um, for their students. Um, but, but understanding, you know, the, the, um, the lifetime earnings differential if you have uh, a college degree versus if you don't, um, you know, uh, dispelling the, the, the loans, myth loans uh, and debt can be scary, um, but it's an investment in your future. Um, you know, loans aren't always uh, um, necessary. Um, you know, some Colleges uh, will pay for full tuition or have scholarships um, to cover costs. You can go to the Air Force Academy and have your education completely paid for if, if that opportunity presents itself. But but loans sometimes are smart um, for the right opportunity. Um, it's important that if you take on student loan debt, um, that you persist and you graduate um, and that you have that piece of paper um, to, um, to, to show for it um, because that's what's going to make the difference in your future earnings that help you pay back those loans. Um, but sometimes, you know, taking on a few thousand dollars of student loan debt for the right college fit for you um, can be the, the right move and, and pay dividends well into um, your future. So, um, yeah, helping, uh, helping educate parents on, on the costs and financial aid, I think, are a big part of it, um, and, and breaking things down to help, um, help students, uh, help parents be more supportive and encouraging and, and a positive um, influence on, on their students' um, pursuit of college is, is um, I, I think, what we're, we're, we're all about. All right, Angel. So now tell me, how was your family when you said, hey, I'm going? What, what was it like at home for you? <laughs> well, as, a, as an only child to a single oh. mother, <laughs> I feel you, it was Angel. a big deal. It was a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, luckily or unluckily, uh, my grandmother didn't allow my mom to go to college when she was growing up in Puerto Rico. So that really made an, made an impact on my mother, man, my mom's out, you know, outlook on, on college and what it meant for someone, you know? So when I was presented and I was doing well in school and, and she was like, get on out of here, go, 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 you know, <laughs> because she didn't get that opportunity. And although as, as much as she knew that she would miss me and she, and it would hurt her, she was more than happy to, you know, let me fly let me go and do my own thing, you know? And, uh, and, and like Matt said, you know, like, it really is an investment, you know, whether or not I went to any university and took loans, whatnot, like it's an investment for my future, right? And now I'm in a position financially where I could actually go back and help my mom out, you know, with anything that's going on. And it's all because of the fact that she just let me go, you know, and as, as much as her, her, you know, they like, got on out of here. It's the best that it's the best thing that could happen for you. And it was the best thing that could happen for me. And, and now, now literally I'm, I can help my mom, you know, and it's all because of the decision she made. Wow. Amazing. I know <laughs> we are definitely wrapping up here. We try to keep them assured. We want to, don't want to keep you guys. I know you probably, what time is it there then? 11, 10, sorry, earlier <laughs> than three hours earlier than this <laughs> year. <laughs> um, so I just want to say, Angel, I mean, we're so proud of you. First generation OCPS grad. Congrats on everything you've done. Um, and thank you so much, Matt, for all of the great resources and tips you have for our first generation students. I know, like Keisha said earlier, we both just wish there were more resources out there. And it was something talked about back then, because just talking about it and finding others that understand what you're going through is such a great first step. So thank you both so much. Enjoy the West Coast out there. Now, yeah. wait, Matt, do you want to do you want to plug your your. Your I mean, I, I really just want to applaud Angel and, and, and say, you know, congratulations and, and keep up the good work. Um, you're a stud. Um, and, and, right and awesome there. 
to give back and, and do something like this. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, you can be proud in declaring I'm first. Um, and, and Nicole and Kaisha too, you know, as, as, as proud first gen grads, but also, you know, thank you for the work that you're doing with students and, and with the district um, in Orange County. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, feel free to please check out youstrive.com and imfirst.org um, and take advantage of, of those programs and resources uh, available to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. And so that's it for another edition of Spill the Tea on the East Coast Orange <laughs> County. <laughs> Thank you. And if you like what you see and you want some more information, feel free to check us out on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We have many other episodes out there. But once again, thank you, Angel. It was a pleasure. Matt, thank you for all that you do. You know, us first gens, we need the love. So thank you for sharing <laughs> it with us. All right. We're signing off. This is Keisha Savory and Nicole Gurley. Thank you, you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.